Well, the sciencey corners of the internet have been abuzz lately with this new shape, the scutoid, uh, that's been, uh, I don't know if you discover shapes, invent, I mean, technically it's been discovered because it was found in nature, um, in a nature article. Um, this is a shape that our cells can take in order to uh, nicely pack themselves together. Um, if I go over here, you can see the article that uh, scutoids were first referenced in. I'll include a link to this in the description below. But basically the way a scutoid works is that you've got a hexagon on one side, a pentagon on the other side, and then you connect the edges in the usual way for a prism, except for one of them, you start to connect it with an edge and then you split that off into a triangle here. And I said, you know what, I can probably make that in vPython. And after about 12 hours of work, I managed to get a scutoid in vPython. Here is the hexagon on one side, Here's the pentagon on the other side. Um, here we've got the edges coming down, joining them nice and parallel. Except for over here, we've got our triangle cut out, resulting in a one, two, three, four, five-sided shape here and a mirrored five-sided shape here. And I think it came out pretty good. Um, the edges don't quite mesh up that well here. That's just because, you know, they're, we're, we're trying to mesh together a couple of three-dimensional slabs. I could probably make those thinner and adjust the angle a little bit. But I've at least got a scutoid that we could work with in vPython if we wanted to try stacking them together or seeing them move or stretch or things like that. So what I want to do uh, is show you the code that I use to create the scutoid so that you can use it yourself. Um, the code is available in a link in the description below. And then at the end, I'd like to make adjustments to this so that we can change the size of the scutoid. Because right now it doesn't quite look like the one from the paper because I'm making all the edges one unit long. So this is one unit long, this is one unit long. So it's kind of a squat scutoid compared to the slender scutoids uh, in this picture, but the same general shape is there. So the first thing we need to do is create our pentagon and our hexagon. To do that, we need to get the angle for a pentagon. That's um, 72 times pi over 180. That's converting 72 degrees into radians. Um, then I create a smidge factor here to make things fit together. Please don't judge me. Here we get our list of points for a pentagon. And this is why the shape is rotating kind of funny um, because we've got it anchored at uh, at the origin, one of the corners, zero, zero. You could move this around. Once you have it compounded, uh, you should be able to move it around and, and then it'll rotate however you want. Then we need to make our hexagon. And basically the way I, I, I had to make this work was I had to make this hexagon kind of fit within this pentagon so that the hexagon is a little bit squished compared to the pentagon. So I needed to calculate what this height should be in order for the thing to work. And that's basically what this calculation is here. And so then we make our list of points for our squished hexagon. Oh, these are failed points that I made mistakes on, so I don't need those anymore. There we go. Then here we create the actual 2D shape. So before we can create the 3D shapes, we have to uh, set these up. I'm using the points function here just so that I can specify where these points are located. Also because these uh, the, hex the hexagon, excuse me, the pentagon may be regular, but the hexagon is not regular. It's got sides of different lengths. And then we need to set up the side thickness. Uh, that's basically the thickness of each of these colored sides here. So that's, you know, the, the cyan part that's sticking out here, the green part that's sticking out right here. Um, that's what we mean by the side thickness. So we've set that to be 0 0.1. And then we just make the pentagon side and the hexagon side. And basically I'm separating those by a distance of one. So this is where our length factor is coming in, is this negative one right here, because they're sep they're parallel to each other in the xy plane. Uh, we just have one moved back from the other by one. And then basically the rest is uh, basically the same thing. We extrude them out along the Z direction. We make them uh, quasi transparent. Then comes the difficult part. We have to make all the other edges. So the first thing I did was create the pentagon side and the hexagon side. Those are the white edges. And now I need to create these sides. Um, and so I started with the four pointed sides, these, uh, these parallelograms here. And so the first one is our, let's see, it's the green side. And so basically what we have to do is connect it to the correct points for the pentagon and then connect it to the correct points for the hexagon. And so since we're dealing with a plane that's kind of tilted here, I needed to get the normal vector to that plane in order to tell it how to extrude. And of course, the way you get a normal vector to a plane is you create two vectors in the plane. So this is A and B here. So these are two vectors in the green plane. And then we just take their cross product 
to get ourselves a perpendicular vector. Now I don't really care about the magnitude of that vector, I just want it to be a unit vector. So I tacked on dot hat that just turns this vector into a unit vector. So perp vec in this case points perpendicular to the green uh, plane here. So it points to the left and down just a little bit. Uh, and so then we use our extrusion function here to create side one. Uh, side two is the blue one. That one was actually pretty easy because that one is facing, let's see, that one is, uh, is, is it's perpendicular vectors pointing down this way. So I actually don't have to worry about it too much. All I need to do is create a rectangle in the XZ plane. So that's what we do here. Uh, we take our shape here because it, it just needs the same, uh, it just needs, oh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong side there. But yeah, we take the same shape here um, we because we just need the same size for it. We just give it a different extrusion vector. So we're going along the Y axis here. Then to create side three, we need to repeat the process for side one because side three is the other green side. So we need it pointing down and to the right. So we got to create a perp vector. And we go through the same process here. You notice A and B are set up the same way here as they are up here. The only difference is the points that we reference. So here we're referencing Pentagon point four, here we're representing Pentagon point two, here we're representing Pentagon point zero, here we're re uh, referencing Pentagon point one. But otherwise the math goes exactly the same and we create our side three. Next comes the three edged side, the triangle. Uh, this one required a little bit more nuance. So first I had to figure out what the height of the triangle should be. And I just figured that it would be better for the triangle to go um, halfway between the hexagon and the pentagon. So if you look, the, the tip of the triangle here is directly halfway between the two white shapes. Now, of course, in order to get the height of the triangle, that's going at an angle here. So we have to invoke the Pythagorean theorem to reference the, uh, the difference in the white shape's height plus half the distance going between the two. So that gives us our triangle height. And then we set up the triangle shape here, and then we have to do the same unit vector trick. We get two vectors in the plane of the triangle, and then we cross those to get our perpendicular vector. Um, because this one was uh, moved away from the origin compared to the others, um, I've set up an origin for the triangle because in order to give the extrusion, you have to tell it where to start and then where to go. So we're going uh, from the origin to uh, the origin minus the side thickness. So we're going into the scutoid a little bit. And that's what gives us our red triangle right here. And then came the most difficult part, the part we call the prestige. Uh, this is where we make two five-edged sides. Um, so this became quite the challenge because these are five-edged sides and they're not regular polygons, right? So I had to figure out what the length of each of these sides was. Some of them are easy, right? This is going to be side length one. This is going to be side length one. This is, I think, supposed to be side length a half. And this one I had to do some math to figure out. So this is what I'm calling X1 over here. So it again involves some Pythagorean theorem. Um, I'll let you work out what all those points represent if you want to dig into the code yourself. Um, and so then I had to create the list of sides, the list of points um, that we would need for this thing. And so then we create the shape. And so here we're creating uh, this, this five-sided uh, irregular polygon shape. And then of course we need to give it a perpendicular vector. The advantage to this one is I know that this thing is pointing up at a 45 degree angle because of the way that I um, engineered this side here of this hexagon. I know that this thing is going at a 45 degree angle. So I just needed to create a vector that pointed to the left and up equally. And then I just turned that into a unit vector here. Again, we finagle the location with an origin. We use our extrusion function here. And then we create a second perpendicular vector to get the second side. Uh, so this part creates uh, the cyan side on the left of the screen here. To get the one on the right, I decided to make things easier on myself. And so I simply cloned the original. So we, you can use the clone function. I'll have a link to a video about the clone function in the description below. To use the clone function, you're simply creating a copy of something you already made so that you don't have to worry about entering all this stuff again. And then I simply rotated it and moved it to get it into the position where I wanted to. And so I just had to play around with these values until it ended up over here. And so here we have our nice scutoid in VPython. 
So what we'll do in the, in the next video that's going to come out uh, about maybe half an hour after this one, um, we'll start playing around with this code to try to get the scutoid to elongate in this direction so that we can control the size of it. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.